This morning's message comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. If you're using a pew Bible from the rack in front of you, that's going to be on page 955. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is God's word. Amen. We thank you for coming out today in the name of Jesus. Thanks for the worship team and your, your singing today and playing as Pat was playing. Um, the, a song came to mind and started ringing through, through my head and it was Les Petits Enfants. And so I asked my BAS brother of, uh, BSA brother of similar age and he said, yes, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> You need a brother of, of similar age <clears throat> to help you remember. Just great. I love this. Today we have before us a, <clears throat> a text that must have a little explanation before we preach through a portion of it. Actually, we're going to preach a phrase from the Holy Spirit. It is repeated twice in the text therefore it should attract our attention and the youth will remember when we went through the book titled biblical interpretation that when you see a passage and there is repetition in it pay attention also note some of the background the bible says as pastor joel just read the birth of jesus christ took place in this way very matter of fact in this culture when you were betrothed and uh You, let's say you wanted to break up the betrothal, you had to do that by a writ of divorce. So it was a very important, uh, a a very uh, uh, serious matter, this betrothal. And uh, before they came together, she was found to be with child. Um, Betrothal would often lead to marriage. And the marriage ceremony was a very uh, celebrative event. And then the groom took his bride home and that is, is, is when the marriage was consummated. There was no physical activity prior to that in betrothal. So it was at this point uh, that Mary was found to be with child. And uh, the obvious conclusion would be that she was unfaithful, but this was not true. Joseph didn't know this at this point, and he thought, well, I'd better divorce her, but he loved her enough that he would do it in a very quiet way. And he would, he would <clears throat> move in this direction. He was a just man. He wanted to obey the law of God, but he also loved his betrothed, and so he would do it very quietly. Well, it took an angel to come to him and to set him straight. Do not fear. Uh, to take Mary as your wife for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So two phrases from the Holy Spirit. On, <clears throat> and we will talk, we will unpack the meaning of this phrase from the Holy Spirit. The key little word ek in Greek. 
from, <clears throat> by means of, the Holy Spirit. This phrase attracts meaning in this text, like a magnet attracts uh, metal filings, and so we're going to take a look at what this, this little phrase means. On, on Tuesday night, or on Monday night, on uh, Christmas Eve service, we will address uh, the verse 21. <clears throat> you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. We will look at that passage in more detail. Later on in the passage here, in the one we're looking at today, you'll notice that there is a prophet from Isaiah. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Then Joseph woke up, and he obeyed God. And <clears throat> so the phrase we're going to look at is from the Holy Spirit. We will attract meaning from the text and from the general text of the of the word of God the New Testament and some from the old we are going to apply this to our lives what we learn from this phrase from the Holy Spirit and we trust that it will be uh, a joy to you and it will cause your celebration uh, to be much better perhaps than it has ever been so we will pray oh God show us your mighty truths this day. Let's go before our God and King in prayer. Father, help us to dig into the texts. And at this time of the year, those associated with Christmas and thereby grow in our understanding of Christ's birth and in our love for him and indeed for the Godhead. Lord, would you help us to do so? In the name of Jesus, the King of glory, we pray. God's amazing creation regularly displays mysteries for our scientists to play with. God's amazing creation regularly presents mysteries for our scientists to stand in awe of. To, to <clears throat> God does this to show the world, I made it, it's wonderful, and you don't know very much about it. For instance, I was reading in a magazine recently uh, concerning a discovery that scientists made last spring, in spring of 2012. There was apparently an experiment done in space microgravity in space a certain fuel certain fuels actually plural were burned in space now picture what this is like when you burn a fuel in space flames don't lick up into the air as they do on earth uh -uh. apparently it's a big ball now, I have not been in space although I felt like it on occasion but it's apparently a ball just a sphere of bright light and then something strange happened so we had this fire going on all of a sudden it went out it went but then unknown to the naked eye it started to burn again but it burns with invisible flame and at a very low temperature it's called cool flame now I'm not talking about something from the 70s we invented the word cool by the way back in the 70s cool no, it's not that. Cool flame, low temperature, can't see it. The scientist looked at that and said, it's amazing. What is it? I don't know. Quite a phenomenon, isn't it? They burn at a lower temperature and invisible to the naked eye. No explanation. Now, as amazing as these mysteries are, and there have been many to date, and there will be many, many more, because God made a wonderful creation. Just an amazing creation has been made, and more mysteries will be discovered, but I'll tell you, they pale in significance 
to the wonder of the birth of Christ. Oh, and I thought as I was reading this article, oh God, why is it that I am drawn to these kinds of mysteries? And read the article. But when it comes to the text, I have cool flame. When I'm reading about the birth of Jesus, it is as if there's this cool flame burning. Oh, God, help me. This is a wonder that is. Although it was great, God's creation, when God created the heavens and the earth, the whole universe, what a great thing. Do you know it actually pales in significance to this miracle? All of that is wonderful. But God, God did this great miracle and it's mysterious. And we can't define the whole thing. All we can do is set up boundary statements of truth and live within them. Here's the mystery. The creator himself, Jesus Christ, became a creature. That is a man. <laughs> the creator, Jesus Christ, became a creature. That is man. Amazing. <laughs> That's far greater than cool flame, infinitely so. Far greater than all you see around the Grand Canyon. It's wonderful, God made it. But even greater than that is the coming of Jesus and putting on human flesh. The Creator Himself, Jesus Christ, became a creature. So we're going to explore this major truth, this vital truth, through the phrase, from the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit. What does that phrase mean? Now, I'm hoping that weak people like me, that the cool flame within me when I read the passages will be turned up to this big ball of flame. I'm hoping by the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit, that as I continue to study and think about the wonderful doctrines laid out here, that cool flame will become a bright ball. Now, there are three doctrines that are going to fall out here today, and you're going to, you're going to see them. Uh, when you ring text properly, doctrine falls out. And it's not just teaching. It's doctrine on fire. It's always on fire, but sometimes it has this cool flame associated with it. And believers, if you're like me, you ask God, no, I don't want that. I want the hot ball when it comes to these doctrines. Okay, now here we are. Here's the amazing thing about this phrase, three things, from the Holy Spirit. We're going to explore what this means and we're going to apply it to our lives, change our cool flame to hot. Here we go. We're going to ramp up the, the, uh, <clears throat> the dial here, just three turns, one, two, three, and then apply them. And I hope that you know, do you have a, a gas cooker? My mom used to call them gas cookers. And so you'd say, if you have a gas cooker, you turn it up and you get this you know? Hopefully not but and then when the flame comes up. Let's hope for the hot stuff, not the cool flame. By the way, that's part of the scientific experiment there. What do the words from the Holy Spirit mean? What do they mean and um, so there are three of them one <laughs> here's dial one Boo. Mary's child was conceived against the laws of nature Mary's child was conceived against the laws of nature God did this notice this phrase verse 18 <clears throat> and when the birth of Jesus Christ Birth took place in this way. Now, there's, this is in the text. Now, this is, pay attention, he's saying to the reader. When his mother, Mary, had been betrothed to Joseph. Okay, Joseph isn't the father. He's earthly father, but he isn't the father. Before they came together, that it would be in sexual union, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. With child from the Holy Spirit. So, not the normal way 
of conception. Jesus was conceived not by way of physical union between Joseph and Mary, but the power of the Lord displayed in the person of the Holy Spirit came upon her and miraculously brought about conception. If you look to Luke 135, Luke 135, very briefly, take a look. Now, if my mom was here, she'd go to Luke and take a Luke. This is, take a look at Luke. Luke 1.35. And the angel answered her, this is Mary in the great annunciation, announcement. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Notice the phrase, the words overshadow the power of the most high will come <clears throat> will overshadow you the holy spirit will come upon you so this is this is the, the miraculous moment of conception this event did not happen until this moment in history when christ <clears throat> was conceived and it will never take place again it was right here at this moment this conception by or from the Holy Spirit. It never happened before Christ's birth and will never happen again. Mary's child was conceived against the laws of nature. Pause a moment. May our hearts and our mind rest upon this truth. And by the Holy Spirit may awe come to us. I read these articles, like Smithsonian Magazine and so on, I read them, and there are some amazing discoveries going on in science, and it's not a bad thing to read about these. But ask God to give us fire, not cool flame, but this ball of fire when we read, wow. Mary's child was conceived against the laws of nature. May we have fresh awe at the same time let us fight against the spirit of the age by the Holy Spirit. Let us fight against the spirit of the age that throws out the miraculous, that throws it out. Let us fight against that. Oh God, give me the ability to see the truth here. And may my life burn with a roaring blaze and not this cool flame. That cannot be seen with the naked eye. That's our prayer. Oh God, help me. The second thing. Not only was Mary's child conceived against the laws of nature. Mary's child was truly human. Truly human. Very much so. Pinch, pinch. That hurt. Okay. Let's begin to unpack this. Notice. From the Holy Spirit, verse 18, she was found to be with child. Child, guess what? The word points to human child. Not angel. Human child. And notice down where the other phrase is. Conce that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Actual conception took place in the human way. Just not earthly father. So you have, you have this picture of a child, a human, and she will bear a son. So we have a human baby. The child was truly human. Being born of a woman points to Christ's humanity. His humanity was like ours, yet unlike ours in this sense. He was born perfect. We were born into sin. He lived a perfect life. No sin. We sin by nature. We just sin. And that's it. He was born. We are born with original sin, and he was not. Notice something else. 
He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Romans 8.3. We went over this before. We're preaching through Romans. We just went over um, this. But <clears throat> what does that mean? If we were planning the coming of Christ, we'd probably say, He, if He's going to come into the world and He's Creator, He's got to be someone special. Maybe Creator one step down. No. It was the design of God that He come, not as an angel. Mm -mm. He didn't even come as a man pre-fall. Notice that. God didn't want him to come as a man be, you know, like Adam was before the fall. Uh, no, no, no. He didn't come man pre-fall. He came as man after the fall. Meaning what? Oh, he was perfect. He didn't sin. But what happened? What do I mean by after the fall? Well, he felt pain. He felt sorrow. He was tired. He was weary. Hunger. If you were walking down the street in Jerusalem and Jesus was passing by and you were doing your work, you wouldn't say, hey, there goes the creator of the universe. No. He just looked like everybody else. So the Bible says, in the likeness of sinful flesh, yet without sin. He didn't sin. Perfect life. But in the likeness thereof, he didn't come as Adam before the, uh, the fall. He didn't come as an angel. He came as one of us. As sin bearer. He had to come as one of us. To identify with us as sin bearer. He could not avoid hunger. Yet he was creator. Truly man. Now pause for a moment and think about this. How shall we apply this? Think of the condescension. Creator of the universe condescends to become like me? <laughs> wow. There was a novel written called The Prince and the Pauper. Does anybody remember who wrote that? Samuel Clemens. <laughs> right. Samuel Clemens. Mark Twain. Great little story. I love reading it. have read it more than once. We had to in school. You don't like reading when you have to in school, right? Got to read this. Get the report by Monday. I don't like this book. But when you can read, this isn't too bad. And I, I, you know, and you steal the report often from comics. Oh, sorry, little. Don't forget that. Don't, don't do that. Read the whole thing. But the Prince and the Pauper, in essence, two lads who look remarkably alike. One is a pauper, a street kid, the other is a prince, and they switch places. Long story, good one. Now, I often thought as I was reading that book, what would it have been like to go from the palace to the street and to mistreatment? That'd be hard, wouldn't it? But think of what it would be like to come as creator, creator, into, into the world of humanity and flesh and fallenness. Holy creator. To live and to die for sinners like me. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Truly human. But how great was his condescension. And what a pattern of self-denial. Here's the first part of the application. Let me see. Let me see this truth, not uh, cool flame stuff, bright stuff. Let me see his condescension. Creator to this. And also, let me see the pattern of self-denial. Can you imagine? When Jesus came... He not only came in sinful flesh, you know, in the, in the, he did not sin, but he came in this flesh that was, you know, in, 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 the, in the likeness of sinful flesh. He came and, and, and lived, yet without sin. And 
hungered and thirsted. Wow. And when he was here, in John 13, he washed the feet of the disciples. Not only is he creator, but now he's slave. And he put a towel around his waist, took his coat off, put a towel around the waist, and then he washed the feet of the disciples. What condescension, what remarkable love. What service to others. Can you imagine that self-denial? How are we with this in the West? How am I with this? And you, you see, you think the Spirit of God may say, wash the feet of the guy next to you. And you may say to yourself, I'm not washing his feet. It's a veritable cornfield. He's got something catchy. I'm not doing that. What holds us back from self-denial, patterned after the self-denial of Jesus? Well, there are at least a couple of things. Haughtiness and pride, very similar. <laughs> very prideful, very haughty. Very, we're top shelf. How are we, you mean I'm supposed to get down here and, and be a servant? To the other people in the kirk, in the church. I'm supposed to be a servant to them. Forget it. I don't even like them for one hour. But Jesus said, If you love me, you obey my commands. And he says, love one another. First John picks that up and calls us to love one another. It's a denial of self to perform the humblest of services for each other. Pride, haughtiness will fight against this, but let's ask God for strength. The pattern of self-denial. God, will you help me to live this way? Think of the condescension of Jesus, creator to pauper. As Romans 8, 3 says, in the likeness of sinful flesh. Not a sinner. Jesus lived a perfect life. But he looked like fallen man. Man in pain and thirst. Wow. But creator? No. Think of the condescension of Christ. Mary's child was truly human. Mary's child was conceived against the laws of nature. Mary's child was truly God. And that's the third one. Mary's child was truly God. Listen to this. From the Holy Spirit. They came together and she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. What does the phrase mean? From the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. This is certainly from heaven, certainly. Now go to the next one. That which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Huh. From, and then he explains, she will bear a son. Call his name Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Here we go. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Elsewhere in the New Testament, we're told this child will be holy. So her child was not only man, but God. The term from the Holy Spirit also indicates that Jesus was God in human flesh. God in human flesh. We call this the doctrine of the incarnation, which comes from the Latin, incarnare, to make flesh. The in implies uh, cause. Cause to make flesh. Incarnare. The incarnation. God in human flesh. God with us. 
How can this be? What a mystery. What a delightful mystery. Emmanuel. He was and is truly God. Now what does this this mean? We unpack from the Holy Spirit. He is truly God from heaven. Further explanation in the text points to his deity. Yet man Wow, he is with us, he is for us, the people of God. He came to save his people from their sins. You know those people, he is with them and he is for them. He's God. Isn't that incredible? Now pause. How might I think of this as we close out today? Here are some questions to write down and to think about as you pray this week. God, change my cool fire to a ball of flame. Lord, would you do that? Do we really wonder at Christ in worship? Do we really want to come to worship him? Or do we just come, maybe, to be entertained? I come because of the music. I come because of the program. I because you're not going to meet Jesus. You're just going to meet. You're just going to meet a marketing idol, a marketed idol. But you're not going to meet Jesus. You come to meet Christ in word, in prayer. In God-centered, Christ-centered song, you come to meet Jesus. He was truly God. Do we really delight in worshiping Him? And as we get older, as one gets older, the question is this for the older citizens of the kingdom. Do we hunger to worship Jesus in heaven? Do we hunger to worship Christ to be around his throne for all eternity and worship the Lamb of God who was slain. Is there a growing hunger or passion for that? Whoa, God help me. There is a new book on the market. We mentioned it last week. I want to buy it. We read the book review in uh, Sunday school. And... Um, it is called the juvenilization of the church. Let's all mass get it and read it. The church, much of it in the West, is just a juvenile gathering of self-worship. God, Jesus came as God. We come to worship Him, not ourselves. Once that is worked out, we will see revival in the church. Until then, all we'll see are religious concerts and religious actions and games. But once we see Christ, God and man at the same time without division, that one we worship. He, this is the doctrine of the, of the dual nature of Christ. God and man at the same time without division. We worship him, recognizing this. We worship the incarnation. God clothed in human flesh, not even special flesh in, in this sense. He didn't come as an angel. He didn't come as, as, as Adam before the fall. He came after the fall in the likeness of sinful flesh, yet without sin. That's Jesus, the dual nature, the incarnation, but also the virgin birth. He was conceived not by ordinary means, but from the Holy Spirit. Here we are. What does the phrase from the Holy Spirit mean? It means Mary's child was conceived against the laws of nature. It means Mary's child was truly human. It means Mary's child was truly God. These are the awesome truths of the text. Virgin birth, incarnation, dual nature of Christ. You ring the text and they fall out. And let us ask God that when these truths hit air, just like sodium metal, that they 
burst into flames in our souls. I don't want cool flame for Christmas, do you? I want hot ball of fire. That's what I want these doctrines to do in my soul. Burn! Burn! To deny the truths mentioned above in my little dissertation here today, to deny these terms, to deny these truths, is to deny the faith. As I was writing out this manuscript, I thought to myself, and I got to this point, and I said, my goodness. If a person willingly denies these truths, Jesus conceived against the laws of nature. Jesus, truly man. Jesus, truly God. You're not a Christian. So today, the challenge is simply this. Flee to Christ. To the Christian, there is one thing that we say. God, help me. Turn the cool flame to hot. May this doctrine burn brightly within my soul. That's our prayer. To the one who may not know Jesus, who is here today being convicted of the Holy Spirit. In fact, there are no flames at all. Hot or cool. Nothing. Today the Holy Spirit is saying, May Jesus Christ become your Savior at His birth. He was announced as Savior. He's still Savior. Perhaps the Holy Spirit is saying, you've never trusted in Jesus Christ authentically. You must needs repent. May Jesus become your greatest treasure. May one's heart today be changed by the Holy Spirit. And there is a mighty work to change a sinner to a saint. May on this day, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you might flee to Christ and say to Jesus, Lord Jesus, I have sinned against you. I not only came in sinful flesh, but I sinned. And I delighted in myself, and I continue to delight myself. God, save me. Save me. Bear the penalty that I cannot bear. Jesus, save me. Call out to have your sins forgiven and put your trust or your faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior all the days of your life. May you do so this day. If you have no Jesus, flee to Christ. That is the call on this occasion. Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. And I can say this only by grace through faith can I say this. He paid the penalty for my sin on the cross. He bore the wrath of the Father directed against sin. He bore it for me. I deserved it. He bore it. And you can say that too, Christian. But if you have no Jesus, you can't say these things. Flee to Him, therefore, this day. Even on this season, flee to Christ. The one who was God and man at the same time without division. The one who was born in a wonderful and amazing way that surpasses all the mysteries of creation. That Jesus, trust in Him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your wonder. You have made a wonderful universe. You have given to us all that we need. Yet, all of the things we have around us, the mysteries and all that, pale in significance to this glorious miracle. The virgin birth, the incarnation, and the dual nature of Christ. Lord, as believers, would you take these doctrines and ramp up the heat. May they go from cool fire to full flame, to full burning sphere in my soul. May I love this truth. May I love Jesus. May I love you, God, with a greater and increasing passion than ever before.